Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. It's Thursday. Trust you are happy and well. Well, I am not too happy to, to uh, well, but we will survive. Tell them that Johnny's Bite is back and, and hashtag, hashtag Johnny's Bite. Put the hashtag up for them, for, for them to see it. Hashtag Johnny's Bite. Share it, like it, and let the people know the real issues in this country. I tell you what, not everybody will like you. I told you that yesterday. I'll tell you that until it sinks in. Not everybody will like you. People will hate you. That's fine. Because even the good book says, if everybody hates you or everybody likes you, then that's not too good. So people will hate you. And don't lose your peace over those who hate you because those who may hate you and may convince others to hate you cannot convince God to also hate you. God loves you. And you must speak up. I don't know where we got the timidity of uh, not speaking up. So you find a driver driving recklessly. There are old and young people in the vehicle and nobody wants to speak up and then they all go and get an accident. Then we blame it on our upbringing. I think it's our, it's our thinking. We must all speak up because you meet me privately and you talk to me and you tell me so the issues I raise are germane. But you have your WhatsApp, Facebook platforms. You have your Twitter, Instagram platforms. You have your groupings. You sit down, but you don't want to speak up. You know the president's handle. You don't want to tag him because you don't want to be tagged. But we know what issues plague us in this country. We are all aware. Hashtag Johnny's Bite. Share it. Like it. Tell someone to share it as well. The only way we can get the message down to the people is when we share the message. So share the message. Hashtag Johnny's Bite. Share it. Tweet at, at the president. This morning, what's on your mind? Tweet at him. Tweet at the vice president. Tweet at the interior minister. Tweet at all the ministers. Tweet at them. Tweet at, they have Twitter handles. Tweet at them. Now this morning, I want to talk briefly about mental health in this country. And I'm focusing on the marginalized and the vulnerable in society this morning. That is why I'm not too happy. Play the videos, Oliver, of what the Kwame Nkrumah circle looks like. Aside the baller that is gathered there. Play the videos of how many mentally challenged people we have right in the heart of the city. I can't believe it. It looks as if we deliberately release them onto the streets. People with mental challenge. We have a mental health authority, but do we give them the money they require? We, it, it looks like we have released the people onto the streets. People with mental challenge, we have released them onto the streets. This is Kwame Nkrumah circle. This is the Kwame Nkrumah circle. The main, 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 main line. Main line. Too many people who are mentally you can see. I mean, by the appearance, you can tell. This is where they sleep. This is where they lie. And they are in your face. I've told you that the Nkrumah circle is a central point. The Kwame Nkrumah circle is a very central point. Look at them. Central point, Kwame Nkrumah circle. If people want, to, they come from the airport, they want to go to Cape Coast by road, by Kumasi by road, all of it. They come to the Kwame Nkrumah circle. They look at them. Pause, pause. Let's go back. Pause it and let's go back. This is a main line. No, show us, show us the mentally challenged people. They are vulnerable in society. What is our social protection standpoint as a people? And then we have a minister for gender, children, and social protection who, uh, that, that's a fiasco, or oh, school feeding program. Uh, we have suspended the coordinator. Then it, it, the next day he says, oh, it is, look at the baller. Look at it. After 6 a.m. in Accra. And record a good morning to you. Good morning to you, Mr. Ajayitaria. Good morning to you, Madam Elizabeth Saki. Good morning. Good morning to all. I'm just greeting you. Good morning. This is this, all, of, all of you. Good morning to you. Pause. Like, like when you get to where the people are, pause. You can go back a bit. Pause. Let's see it. Let it be in their faces this morning. How we have released. And Dr. Akwesiose has been talking about how woefully we have failed to fund 
mental health in this country. Mental health is a big thing. How we have failed to fund mental health in this country. And this is it. I want this morning for it to sink in for you. After 6 a.m. in the city center, people are sleeping in the city center. We know people sleep in tunnels, uh, under bridge and all of that outside. But this is your city center. Are we serious? Play the video. Now, we saw a video of a policeman who had gone to drink alcohol. And the police had written a statement suggesting that we want to give them, uh, what do you call, we want to give him psychological support and all that. I salute the police for that. That they are not immediately uh, treating him like uh, a, a nail. So they're using a sledgehammer to hit it. I, I, like, I like that approach by the police. But it also comes into the conversation about mental health. We know that in the past, policemen have committed suicide. They've killed themselves with their own guns that they picked from the armory. We know. We are aware. Have we checked what their living conditions are? Go, go to the barracks. Go and check. They live in cubicles. And that old mentality, the colonial mentality of the fact that people must live, a, you know, a, a, un, an uncomfortable life because if you make them too comfortable, that's him, that's a policeman. Only God knows what's going through in his head. And the person, the individual who recorded the video was indicating that, oh, it could have been protocol police and, and all of that. Well, there's political police, there's protocol police, and there's proper police these days. There are political soldiers, there are protocol soldiers, and there are proper soldiers. There are political fire service people, there are protocol fire service people, and there are proper fire service people. We have divided the country into three. Protocol, kakra, politics, kakra, and proper people, kakra. So it is an open secret. And the police statement that they released was silent on the protocol bit. He's wearing a uniform. Only God knows what go he's going through. Only God knows what going, he's going through. And I'm saying that we have not taken mental health serious in this country because everybody is a candidate for mental health. It's not funny face. Everybody is a candidate for mental health in this country. Everybody. Every single person is a, is a candidate. So why don't we treat it well? And I'm saying there are too many mentally challenged people on our streets. It's not just the Kwame Nkrumah circle. Go to uh, mainline Accra. Go to the Central Business District. Go to Shama. Go, go all, all over the place. Why? Now, pull for me the, the act, the Mental Health Act, quickly. And then, and then we will wrap up. The Mental Health Act. Pull that for me quickly. Now, we have a whole act passed by Parliament talking about, not this one. Okay. Now, this is it. It says the, uh, the, the, what do you call it? Oh, come on. Stop misbehaving. Oliver, fish it for me. The first one with the, with the coat of arms. Now, we, we talked about the full act that we have generated. We talked through the 846th Act of Parliament of the Republic of Ghana. Mental Health Act 2012. An act to provide for mental health care and for related matters. Blah, blah, blah. We finished that. Now, we said there shall be... Uh, there's established by this act a body to be known as mental health authority where there is hindrance to the acquisition of property the property may be acquired by the for the authority under the state property and contracts act 1960 of the state legal blah 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 now what is the ob object of the authority the object of the authority is to a propose mental health policies and ensure their implementation that's the first one they have been doing that b Implement mental health policies. And then it says, C, promote mental health and provide humane care, including treatment and rehabilitation in that at least restrictive environment. And D, promote a culturally appropriate, affordable, accessible, and equitably uh, distributed, integrated, and specialized mental health care that will involve both the public and private sectors. This is it. We gave this on to ourselves. Now, what will shock you is who sits on the, on the mental health authority. Find, find the other one for me. And their functions. Their composition is so rich that you start asking yourself, 
Why are there too many mentally challenged people? Now, this is not a fact. Look for me there. Oh, good. The governing body of the authority. There shall be a chairperson. The chief executive of the authority is there. One rep from Ministry for Social Welfare. Not below the rank, uh, uh, what do you call, of a director. From the Attorney General's office. Principal State Attorney. From the Ministry of Health. From the Ministry of Interior. From the Ghana Health Service. One person from a tertiary medical training institution nominated by the tertiary medical training institutions and three non-governmental persons nominated by a minister, at least one of whom is a woman. The members of the board shall be appointed by the president in accordance with Article 70 of the Constitution. The board shall ensure the proper and effective performance of the functions of the authority. This is it. So we, we know how to put beautiful English together. Beautiful English. We write it. We, we don't fail at writing beautiful English and we don't fail at signing all the beautiful agreements. But go onto our streets. Do we even give the mental health authority the money they require? And I'm telling you, everybody is close. Just like everybody is closer to jail, everybody is also closer to the asylum. The mental hospital, everybody is closer to it. Everybody is closer to it. Now, quickly play for me. Let, let's finish this one. Quickly play for me the, the video, the soundbite of the gentleman who lost his wife because somebody was demanding for 600 Ghana cities for fuel for the ambulance. I am so scandalized this morning that we were told to, play, to dial 112 when we have an emergency and that the ambulances have GPS and that the ambulances will be connected to the hospitals and that when you call, uh, uh, you, you get an ambulance. That was what we were told. After some of us had pushed for the 307 ambulances to be released because when they brought them in, they parked them at the state house. I spoke with Honorable uh, Ajima Menu at the airport when I emceed the Orbis Flying Eye event. And I asked him a question. And I asked him why we're keeping the ambulances there. It, of course, it was for public show. Again, we wanted to do public show. We got to know later that the 307 ambulances that were released at that day at the Independence Square, not all of them were deployed. Some had to be taken back to be retrofitted. Play the mass SOT for me. How we succeeded as a country in killing somebody's wife. To watch your food anyway, you know. Think in there. <laughs> yeah, look up. Oh, no. Man, they, 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 they have to drive back to Fijian Hospital. So, oh, senior. Young now maybe I'm here. Quite a couple of people hospital now. We were at the entrance. We stood there. He <laughs> stood there. He stood there. He stood there. He stood there. They were going up and down. And so that man came to tell me that. Eh, why you then car over Buana? You know why he is. But it's Jim. Boy, you can be up there. But you tap. I bet you the moon that made it in there. Well, precise time. Now, one brass band, I catch up there. Uncle Chasing the eight thirty eight. Uncle Chasing the eight thirty eight. Meaning it was at that time that my wife. Hash target, Johnny's bite. This is how we succeeded in killing somebody's wife. As a nation, we are all watching. And we are even making mockery of the man and saying that the, 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 the time that the lady died is, is, good to, is a good number to stick. How disgraceful and shameful. How disgraceful and shameful. Those politicians and the big men Professor Zakaria, good morning to you. I know you have lived outside before. When you travel outside and you call an ambulance, do they ask you to bring fuel? I'm asking you, sir, when you travel outside, Professor Zakaria, when you travel outside of this country, when you call an ambulance, do they ask you to pay for fuel? Do they even ask you to go and look for a bed before they move the ambulance? What kind of disgraceful attitude is that? And this is how this man is speaking up. You know that uh, at some point, there was even a gentleman I spoke with many, many years, I think three or four years ago. He lost his father after roaming seven hospitals in this country. Seven. He lost his father. There was no ambulance. was carrying him in a taxi all through. Seven. They couldn't find a bed for him. 
And that's the situation. You call an ambulance, they tell you, have you found a bed? You will have to now go to the hospital to go and look for a bed, come and confirm, and then they will ask you to buy fuel. Rubbish. They will ask you to buy fuel. And that's how we succeed in killing people. I say most of the people who die in our hospitals, they don't die because the illness killed them. They died because our negligence killed them. They died because our negligence killed them. Play the video of the ambulance carrying the cement for me. We have time to use ambulance to carry cement. We have time to pick an ambulance from Sege and give a flimsy excuse that the ambulance had come to be repaired. And we take the ambulance towards Kaswa Budubura area to go and carry cement. We have money to carry cement in the ambulance. This is our ambulance. We have money to carry cement in the ambulance. Our conscience is missing as a country. We carry ambulance and use cement. We use it to cut cement. Then when human beings are sick and they have to be transported to the hospital, we take money from them. Did we take money to, before we use the ambulance to cut cement? And what has even happened to the people who used our ambulance to cut cement? Shame. This is how we succeed in killing people. And thank you to Kwabla Binta Akando, uh, MP for Jabosu, and all the others who went to go and see the, the man. Up until now, we have not even gone to see the man. We have time and money and the opportunity to use our ambulance to cut cement. Then when a human being is dying and we make a call and we want an ambulance, they tell us that we cannot find the ambulance. You have to bring fuel. We have to bring fuel. Fuel to go and do what? Is it my job? If we had a better system, and that is why a big man will always travel outside of this country to go and seek medical care. Because they know that our system we're running here is bogus. The system is bogus. Bogus system. There are some very good health professionals, but the system itself makes them feel useless. Like they, they don't know what they are doing. Very good medical people. Who, when they transition into the private sector or even go to do locum at the private sector, you, you, you find them so functional. In the public sector, we have useless everything. Why must I be the one, the sick person? Why must I be the one going to find a bed? I phone the ambulance service, 112. I tell them what my emergency is. And they will ask me if I have found a bed where I'm taking it to. Meanwhile, we were told that there's going to be some level of interconnectivity. So once you call, the ambulances will be available. It will connect you to a bed. We were told all the sweet things at the Independence Square. We were told all the sweet things at the Independence Square. 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. Here we are. People are being asked to pay 600 Ghana cities to transport their sick people in an ambulance. And we have succeeded in killing somebody's wife. And we even make mockery of it to say that the numbers, that the, 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 the moment she died, we could actually extrapolate little numbers from that time and go and stick it. How heartless. How heartless can we be? And you see, because nobody was punished for using our ambulances to cut cement, this one will also go, we use the ambulance to cut cement, let it sink in. So that when you are defending rubbish, you know that you could, it could be you next time. When you want an ambulance to take you to, to the hospital to be giving care, you know that the ambulance will be cutting cement. The ambulance will be busy cutting cement while you'll be, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be struggling for, for, for your life. What kind of a country is this? Why do we do this to ourselves? We launch a beautiful thing. We speak all the nice grammar. We talk about everything. And then the next point, we don't know what's happening. Were we not told that the ambulance drivers and all of them will have insurance? We know that some of them were shot. What is the status of that? Why do we do this to ourselves? A bokra.